Now it's time to set up our databases. For this we'll use a free solution called uh, MongoDB Atlas. Of course uh, you can create an account here, it's for free. And once uh, you have an account you can log in uh, into it. And inside we'll see that we have uh, different clusters and uh, projects. We can build a new cluster. We will choose those with uh, free tier available. And you should know that your first cluster is uh, free uh, for creation. Once you have your cluster, you click on security and you add another username. So let's say this will be Nevian234 and with the same password 345 I will give read and write uh, permissions and we'll click add on the user so we will use this user and password to connect to our cluster also another thing to do is to whitelist your IP address in order to be able to connect uh, to this uh, MongoDB atlas here. For the purposes of development I've uh, whitelisted all the addresses so this is not uh, very secure but you can include specific IP addresses here and uh, make the connection more secure. For example I can add the, my current IP address and uh, I will be able to be the only one authoritative source to connect to uh, this uh, MongoDB Atlas. All right, afterwards we will click on connect and we have different options to connect uh, to our database. We'll just choose this connect to your application and uh, we'll use this uh, uh, short SRV connection string. Uh, we'll copy this information here and uh, for now that's it. After having uh, set up Atlas, the next thing to do is to install Postman. Uh, so we will just uh, download the application. Uh, we can choose a platform like Linux. And we will need a Postman in order to test uh, our server requests, whether it processes them correctly. So we'll just save the application and open up again the terminal and inside of our downloads it should appear soon so we'll just type tar minus zhxyf so this will create a directory with a binary inside and we can enter the postman directory and run the postman application. Postman requires authentication so you better create an account. Uh, this is of course for security purposes uh, in order not too many people to use and overflow the APIs. So you sign in and once inside you can just click create request or You'll be here actually. All right, so Postman is installed and we'll use it very soon. We are ready to code our server. Uh, for this, we are inside of our applications folder, and if we open up Visual Studio, we can see that we have several files inside as well as directories. And uh, here we have one file which is called package.json. Inside of this file, we have different uh, dependencies over uh, different uh, packages which will be installed together um, and used by our uh, project. So we have uh, dependencies which are being used uh, for the final production when uh, the project is ready uh, to be used uh, live in the internet. And uh, we have dev dependencies which will uh, actually use uh, while we're will be coding or developing our um, project. Uh, so we can see that uh, TypeScript is uh, here, linter, and uh, a lot of 
from the Angular animations and uh, material components are here. Uh, for the setup of our server, we'll add uh, here more components and more libraries. And for this, uh, we can just uh, use uh, another terminal here. We'll just type sudo npm install and then we'll install the course package. This package actually will allow us to make uh, requests uh, from our server to others. This will allow us to bypass certain uh, request restrictions in the browser because uh, we'll be developing uh, locally and uh, sometimes uh, the browsers uh, put such restrictions uh, when we are trying to send uh, requests to our local servers. As you can see, the package is installed and it's automatically added uh, to our uh, dependencies. Then we'll add a few more modules. We'll install Express library. Uh, so Express is a kind of middleware which will allow us to uh, process uh, requests and send uh, different responses based on what kind of logic we would like to include inside. You see the Express uh, is added. Then we'll add Mongoose. Mongoose will be used in order to connect with our uh, database Atlas uh, MongoDB. Then we'll add uh, two libraries for dealing with uh, web tokens, uh, in particular JSON web tokens. So we'll add JSON web uh, token and express JVT. So they will help us to process as well as to generate uh, web tokens for secure communication with the REST API we are going to create. Then we will install body parser. So uh, this library will allow us uh, to grab uh, uh, different parts from our requests uh, more easily than parsing them uh, uh, manually. All right, we are ready with our dependencies. Now, while the modules are being installed, we'll create one server.js file inside of our uh, source folder. And we'll include all those additionally installed modules. So we can just type const course and we'll require the course module. We'll do the same for the express mongoose body parser GVT and GVT verifier. This way we'll have uh, local variables which we can use and reference uh, those modules and functions inside of them via those variables. Now for the mongoose body parser. Okay, we have the modules and now I will create uh, one directory where we'll place connection strings to our databases. For this, we'll go uh, here inside of uh, source, we'll create a new directory called config. Uh, then inside of the config, we'll place uh, uh, three files. First will be called keys.js. Next one will be keys for production. So it will be keys production.js and keys for development, keys dev.js. Inside of uh, keys GS will require, depending on the environment we are, the other files. And so we can just check if uh, process.environment and the node environment we're checking is a production, will export or will provide the keys production, will place their name in order to get the current directory we are, because we don't know uh, if we are uploading the project to, to a different uh, hosting uh, provider, this uh, initial directory can be different. So that's why we grab it uh, dynamically from the system. 
So we will require here keys and fraud. As you understood, this will grab uh, this file here for inclusion. Otherwise, we'll grab the keys develop want. We save. Inside of the keys of production, we can go to our Atlas uh, settings. And here inside of the connect, if you can remember, uh, uh, we can copy uh, this address here and uh, we can use uh, part of it. This is the whole address. It has a lot of parameters inside. Uh, so this is the connection string. We see that we are connecting to different clusters, uh, which are fallback if one is not working to the other. I will just uh, separate the different variables for you to be able more easily to, to see them. Also, we will specify here our password. I'm using the same password and this is the port and basically we are connecting to this uh, database uh, called test. So in order to configure our application, we will provide uh, two parameters. One will be the Mongo URI in the form of a, a JSON format. So we'll type Mongo URI and then we'll provide our connection to the MongoDB. And the next thing is the rest of the configuration. So we will just type Mongo configuration. It will be an object for the configuration. We'll use this parameter, use new URL parser, and we'll set it to true. Uh, then all the others SSL will set to true. Then we will set the replica set. These are required uh, from uh, the Mongo uh, DB provider. At last, of course, we'll set the authentication source and uh, retry writes to true. In order to provide those parameters, we'll type module.exports. So we'll export everything from here. Um, right now, as you can see, we have one connection URI with our modified password here. Uh, the default uh, database we're connecting this test database and these are the additional parameters we would like to uh, provide to Atlas uh, in order to establish our uh, connection. For now, we can just copy this from the production and use it in our development as well. Then in our server, we can create one variable called config and we can require um, the newly created file. So again, this the name plus will require those keys. This way, if we are in development, uh, we will require this configuration. If you're in a production, we require this configuration. Also, we would like to uh, set up uh, here a secret, uh, which will be used for signing up our JSON web token. So for now, we'll just uh, type it secret. Of course, you can provide something longer and more sophisticated here. And now came the part to run our express middleware. So we can just type var app equals express. This will create an instance of express and can be used inside of our um, server. And uh, next we'll just connect to MongoDB using mongoose. So we'll just type mongoose dot connect and we'll provide the information from our uh, keys. So we'll provide Mongo URI and Mongo CFG uh, parameters. So we'll just type connect config dot Mongo URI and config dot Mongo CFG. We'll try to connect with those. If uh, anything happens such as uh, we cannot establish communication just type catch and inside of here we will use a 
as we can see this is a callback so we can just type on error we can grab the error and uh, console log it on the screen we'll use uh, json uh, stringify to display the error because usually the errors are in um, placed as objects so we can actually see what's going on okay this is our server for now we can try to save it and here if we type node source server.js we'll be able uh, to see the execution of the server we see that there is an error in our connection actually there is a bad authentication this is because i used the account with one two three four five we change it in both ways in our keys we save and again we'll try to run our server as you can see again uh, authentication is failed one uh, more reason for this is uh, that uh, here in our cluster when we click on connect and connect to your application it depends on what kind of uh, version of uh, mongodb uh, is supported on uh, the development machine you have uh, and also by express so far we were using uh, this long connection string and uh, now i advise you just to copy the short one and uh, replace it in both of the production and development keys as well as changing the password in both of the places I know that this can lead to a lot of frustration, but uh, it's better to know what might be the reason behind uh, uh, um, the problems we we're connecting to Atlas. Again, we'll try to run our server. And now we see that uh, we are connected and we can execute commands. So that's how uh, we connect to MongoDB using Mongoose.